Hey guys, Fire Eyes Sam, welcome to part one of our Revel 125th for Mustang Mac 1 video build. So yes, on to our next build and this kit I've had for quite a while now. I believe it's getting quite hard to get as well. Um, this was a complete inspiration from the colour, uh, Gulfstream Aqua. Absolutely stunning colour. I did one of these a while back. It's in the display case somewhere. Can't quite see it. It is there though, somewhere. And I did my own kind of version of this colour. It wasn't quite right. It was Mr. Hobby colour. Uh, and I kind of want to revisit it ever since. And I found the colour today. I think somebody mentioned it and i went searching for it and found it i thought you know what i'm gonna do it so that's the color we're gonna do today so today we're gonna get it all prepped primed painted decaled all the chrome work done and a panel line wash in preparation for 2k now there's a lot of work at this prep because there's two body panels to go around at the end and they take a little bit of fettling to get them in place so a little bit longer on that path than usual but we're back in part two and get some 2K down on this. And you'll see the true beautiful color of this kit. So let's crack on. Right then. So the Revel 1969 Ford Mustang Mach 1. Had this kit for a while. Uh, I am a bit of a Mustang fan. I do like them. Um, until now, not had the ideal color. But now I do. So this is part of the reason of building this kit. The body shell, beautifully clean. Really nicely molded Revel kit. Um, not too old, I think. I think it was, was it 2003. I forget now. Clear parts, not bad at all. Um, tires, really nice tires, actually. No markings on them. Tread pattern, really good. A couple of places to clean up, but nothing really any drastic. Um, we've got the main engine parts, the chassis, the bonnet, uh, the dashboard, and what have you. Beautifully crisply molded. Really is very, very nice. Lots of little sprues of this kit, all sorts of little stuff. I think there's add-ons from different kits. Now we have some panels on the front and back to attach. There's a rear one. We've got our wheels, prop shaft, fan, there's engine parts there. All sorts of stuff on there. Like I said, there's a rear panel and a front panel to attach to the body. They do take a little bit of work. We've got our interior pan, uh, the seat fronts and backs, our exhaust system. Uh, and a few of the bits and bobs, but for uh, you know, not the newest of Revel kits, I'm pretty sure it was either 2000 and 2003, I completely forget now. Um, that it was actually a very crisply molded kit. Got the chrome trees, we've got a couple of loose parts that have just fell off in general day to day handling. This is the front panel that fits on the front, it's not a bad fit, it's not a bad fit at all. It needs a bit of work, needs a bit of careful gluing. Like I said, the body, really nice and clean. Nice decal set as well. It's always good to see. Nice high quality decals with the kit. And instructions. Typical Revel instructions. Nice and simple to follow. Nothing particularly difficult about this. Probably the hardest thing about this kit is those front and rear panels. The rear one, not so much. That glues in place pretty cleanly. Needs a little bit of filling on the lower edges. The front one is a bit of a tricky fit and does take a little bit of time and care to assemble. Instructions, clear and concise, just as normal from Ravel. And uh, all the colour decal placements on the rear of the page. So like I say, we've already picked our colour. We're going with Ford Aqua, Gulfstream Aqua. So we've already got our colour picked out and mixed from ProScale. Uh, we've got some parts to clean up. We're going to get everything that's going to be painted in 2K done first. Contrary to the instructions, as you know. I always go with the body shells first. So we're cleaning up the sprue points with our cutters and then with an ultimate 400 thinning stick, we're going to go and clear up those sprue connection points as well. And also check around for any wisps of excess plastic or anything that shouldn't be there. A little test fit of the bonnet fits in place really well. The rear panel, just figuring out which way it goes. Uh, any which way we go. It's like a USB stick, you know. You plug it in that one way, it's wrong. The other way, it's still wrong. It was the original way that you put it in. Yeah, well, that's what this is like here. Now, this is not the best fitting. It fits in okay. Uh, we are going to have to use a touch of filler on this here and there. But, yeah. Now, I did ask on Tinternet Web, could I glue these in place without any issues getting the chassis in? And the answer was yes. It is very, very tight. Uh, but it is doable at the end. So, you can glue these on first. 
So what I've basically done is lined up the back, got it all in place, added a bead of glue at the top. I'm just going to hold it in position. It's only glued at the top, not at these bottom pieces where I'm holding here. I'm just going to glue it in until we get the top in place, get that done, and then we'll just deal with one side at a time. So I think that's the key for this. Don't try and rush it and do it all together. But just glue a section at a time. Hold it for a minute or two. Let the glue do its work. This is my Tammy Extra Thin Plasti Weld Mix. It's a nice hot glue. So it does melt the, melt the plastic really well. I'm just checking how well those seams line up because it's just right on the edge we want to go. So I'm just going to hold it, just touch the glue to it, let the capillary action carry it through. Now, this is a seam we're going to have to fill. So we don't mind a bit of molten plastic here. I'm just going to give it a bit of pressure and hold it for a second or two. We do want molten plastic on this because we want to be able to sand it. And then same on the other side and the inside as well. Just add the glue and keep it held until we're happy that it's glued together. Now, it's going to need a bit of filler and it will need some sanding. Um, I did try a bit of Vallejo filler first. It was having none of it, so I opted for super glue in the end. This front panel, a little bit more challenging. I cleaned up all the excess plastic from the sprue points. It's a little bit oversized, it's just a touch, but I think the key to this is just get it in place as good as possible and then sand the edges flush. That's the way I did it. So what I opted to do was deal with one side at a time. So I'm just cleaning it up and maybe altering the angle of things to get them to fit better. And once I got to a point where it was fitting okay, I thought right now we can commit to glue. So with that side pushed in and held pretty well, we're not going to get any molten plastic on this because this is a natural panel line on the car. So we're just going to push it in place and hold it, apply the glue, let this side fully set, and then we'll move on to the other side. Just deal with it one at a time. What we don't want to do is put an excess pressure on and get molten glue out. On to the other side, we can do exactly the same. Just hold it, drop your glue on the floor. There you go. You don't need a lot of glue at all. Watch those fingertips for prints as well. It's very easy to do. And just sit and hold it. Look, I've got you lot to chat to in the live stream. So I think I held these for five minutes each. Just kept holding them. No pressure. Just holding it in place nice and gentle. Like I say, we don't want to disturb or destroy that panel line. With the bonnet hood, depending on where you're from in the world, we've got this little scoop thing. I don't even know what it is. I'm not going to pretend to know what it is, guys. I'm sorry. Some kind of shaker, scoodly hood thing intake. I don't know. I build the models. I know nothing about the cars. So they're glued in place. These little side vents, not a great fit at all. So I fettled them as good as I could. With the sanders, we'll pop them in place and just got the best of a bad situation. Once I was happy they'd fit in, I hit them with some glue. Again, I'm not leaving molten glue everywhere. It's going to get it in and we're going to infill it later with some water based Vallejo filler. So it's getting it in, it's getting a little bit of a squeeze because, again, I think there's a natural panel line on the body. And if it wasn't, it is now. And I'm just coming in, infill the rest with glue hopefully draw in some of the plastic to fill the gap a little bit more there we go once we're happy with the front and back seams we can sand them back a bit so this hasn't been filled yet we're just going with what we glued together i've left this for about six hours six to twelve hours should be pretty adequate for this you may find it's still a bit soft so if it is just leave it alone 24 hours is my standard answer and that's not a bad guy to go for and as I say on the front one, we're just going to sand it ever so gently on the outer edge until it's nice and flush, but still leaving that panel line. So it's just some gentle sanding with the UMP sanders. While we're there, we'll start work on the seam lines as well, which run from front to back. And a rather tricky one that runs on an angle down that kind of rear seam uh, behind the window. So it's a case of just gently sand away till they're all gone. It's a bit monotonous this, but this kit's not too bad at all. It's actually pretty clean. So it didn't take a lot of cleaner. So with some low water-based putty, I'm going to get a cocktail stick. And we're just going to place some putty into the panel lines. And we're not trying to fill it. We're trying to kind of hide the poor fitting gap 
So what we're going to do is we're going to pop the putty in. It literally starts to dry instantly, this stuff. It's very, very quick. I don't rate it as a filler. It sinks and uh, shrinks too much, which is why I use it for this. So for filling seams and that, I hate this stuff. It's crap. I'll be totally honest with you. But for doing what I'm doing here, it works perfect. So we're using the cotton, uh, cocktail stick to push the putty in. We've got a cotton bud. We've not licked it. Definitely not licking that. And then, we've, yeah, unmoistened, non-licked cotton bud. It is moistened. Uh, oh, oh, done it again. Um, we're wiping off the excess. And what that'll do is, as we're rubbing over, it'll put a slight indentation in the panel line and kind of bring like a, a faux panel line back that isn't as pronounced or sharp. Not licking it. Um, and that way it fills it in without looking like an eyesore and makes it look a little bit better. Word of warning if you're licking cotton buds, if you double end the lick on this, the, the filler doesn't taste good. Been there and done it, tastes horrible. Yeah. On the back end, uh, I did try some Vallejo filler. As I said, it sucks. It really does suck at actually filling a panel line or a gap that you want to fill. So there's only one true filler for this, and that's CA glue. It, it's a simple fact. It doesn't shrink. You can hit it with kick and it's dry instantly. It's the king of fillers. It really is. Being a harder material though, it takes a bit more sanding. So we're going to hit it with a 400 thinny stick to begin with and fight back the CA glue. Once we're happy, we get the sponge, the UMP 240 thinny sponge. And that can deal with the rest of it. Now, what I suggest with super glue, when you think it's gone, it's probably still there. It just likes to hide. And you'll see it when you're painting and just keep sanding until the seam lines are gone. We're gonna go around the entire car and rescribe all the panel lines. Not a lot, we don't need to go crazy. We're not trying to cut through. I see a lot of people on YouTube rescribe and it looks like they're trying to get through to the other bloody side. So we're just gonna very lightly scribe it. The holly scribers are the best in my opinion. Almost foolproof. In this case, just go around and we're just gonna slightly deepen the panel lines just a touch. And there we go. Once we're happy with that, we've got our Tamiya 3000 grit sponge. And we're going to go all over the body and key the surface. As you know, that will give us a good surface base for our primer. It'll allow the primer to grip. We also know that there's no nasties on the body. Everything could be nice and super smooth. In this case, going all the way around. 3000 grit Tamiyas are the perfect grip for doing this as well. And then... We've got a toothbrush in all those panel lines, get rid of any sanding dust and what have you. We've got it mounted on our Tamiya stand here as well. Not very securely, I will add. And then we've got some ProScale pre-paint degreaser on a clean piece of uh, kitchen paper by a liberal, liberal amount. And we're going to go all over the plastic and degrease it all. And this will get any residue behind from glue sanding you know you've been what's it or cheetos for your lunch and leaving a cheeto fingerprint on the model sandwich marks crackers you know anything you've been eating for your lunch and snacking on will be all over this model so we want to completely degrease it including the bonnet and uh, once you've done that turn it over dry side of the kitchen paper and dry it off and there we go we have a perfectly prepared body so we're in the booth we've got my water cr3.3 uh, uh, airbrush some pro scale white microfiller primer and i've just put a couple of like dust coats down of the primer uh using alternating up and down left and right patterns no need to hose this stuff on there's no benefit in doing it at all nice light thin coats are the way to go um i'd probably do three maybe four coats in total a couple of light ones finishing off with just some very very slightly heavier ones at the end never goes on wet though we don't want to put this stuff on wet and just slurry prime everywhere. We'll flat this back when we're done, give it a quick sand back, and then we can come back for our paint. Don't forget the small things like any mirrors, um, any spoilers, anything that's going to be painted needs to be done now. We've got Gulfstream Aqua Blue from ProScale. This color is absolutely beautiful. So you can get our paints from our site. Obviously, you know it by now. We will custom match colors as well. I want to see our three again. This is my car painting airbrush. This is what I use for near enough everything bar 2K on the cars, in which I use a, uh, this is a CR3 Revolution, and I use a CR Revolution 0.5 for 2K. So several light coats, no wet coats again at all. We don't need wet coats. Wet coats are bad 
the painting unless it is specifically requested. We're at about 18 psi and we're going to put one nice light coat down all over the model. And what we're concentrating on here more than anything, rather than getting it covered and hosed on, is getting all those nooks and crannies like around the lights, around the windows, around the wheel arches. Just getting a nice, even light coat everywhere. This is going to probably going to have about seven coats of paint on it, just like this. Nice, light, thin coat, building it up. And trust me, you will get much better finishes doing several, seven or eight light coats and three or four heavy ones. It will look so much better. Trust me. Honestly, trust me. Don't hose your paint on. There's only a few paints I like to be hosed on. One of them is TS uh, Tamiya's. Um, everything else I've ever painted likes to go on in a drier coat like this. So as you can see, I'm constantly all around all those windows, the wheel arches, uh, tops of the doors around the engine bay. And you can see how stripe it is. It's not a full coat. Same with the bonnet as well, just nice light coats. So we're just concentrating on getting it covered rather than actual coverage, if that makes sense. We're on to probably, I would say, about our fourth coat now. And you can see we're getting some real nice coverage. I've slowed down the passes on the airbrush. There's nothing heavy going down here at all. It's just nice, light, thin coats. You can see my spray pattern. It's just really nice, light coats. Slightly overlapping the last coat. No wet coat, though. And just building it up slowly. Color cups on the airbrush in case you spill. Like I say, concentrate on those nooks and crannies around the windows door handles engine bay all around the lights the wheel arches to get nice even coverage and remember if you're painting separate things paint them all at the same time so i'm doing the main body the bonnet and the wing mirrors all at the same time and that way you're guaranteed there will be the same shade so this is probably coat number six or seven it's really hard to tell i lose track of the coats that i do uh, for the most part, it all gets filmed, but in editing, I just lose track of what I've done. The colour's absolutely stunning, and it's only going to get better when it's 2 k But this is where practice makes perfect. The more you airbrush, the better you'll get. It's as simple as that. I've been airbrushing for years now, well over... Let me see. Um, 12 years? Yeah, 12 years now I've been airbrushing. Probably longer, really. Um, I got my first airbrush in about 2004, I think, but I stopped modeling. So I've had a lot of practice. I've built a lot of models. I've airbrushed a lot of things. I've built nearly I'm approaching 200 cars that I've built now. And it is one of those things that you get better at. And I pride myself on my paintwork and hopefully it shows through. And it is. Practice makes perfect. And perfect preparation is key. It really is. It makes such a difference. And this is why I strive to put down and tell everyone about the thin coats. It gives you a much more superior paint job. You can see this. My paintwork is absolutely flawless. Uh, this probably took me about an hour in total. Uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm spraying a coat, leaning to flash off for five minutes, then coming back. So I'm in the hangout with the guys. I just scoot back to my bench and have a chat with them while I'm waiting for a coat to dry. And it's as simple as that. And there we go. That's probably, I think it was about seven coats in total on this. Absolutely stunning colour. Our paint dries super quick as well. Really quick. So no issues there. Uh, it's just a beautiful colour. If you need a little bit more, you can always add it. Just make sure the amount of coat tallies up with each separate part. There's nothing worse than putting a part on like the bonnet and thinking that's a completely different shade than everything else. So spray everything together. As you can see, they've got a little bit of dust on the top. And... If you spray one layer, if you're very careful and just wipe, you'll often get the dust off because it's just snagged on the paint. And there we go. Happy with that. So we'll give it another very slight blast over. And there we go. And like I say, I have done the wing mirrors as well. So we know everything is the right color. So there we go. This is dry to next day now. We are going to mask off our own stripe now. The car comes with kit stripes. I didn't like them at all because it called for spraying the black and then infilling the edge with the decal. The problem is the black's a different color on the decal and it's got carrier film on the decal and you'll see it because the stripe is supposed to be a matte black on this. So I looked at it, weighed it up and thought, yeah, no, not going to do that. I'm going to do my own thing. So I was looking at the later Mustangs and they have this stripe on the bonnet instead. 
So I've got my micrometer with no batteries in, but I can still use it as it's intended by setting the size one side. I'm touching the edge of the bonnet and the masking tape. And then doing the same on the other side and getting it absolutely perfect each end. And then we'll flip ends. We'll check it through the middle. Be careful you don't scratch your paintwork with this. It's very easy to do. So we'll check the end, the middle. Looks about perfect to me. If you want to readjust, you can just take it off, take it all the way back, and then lift it down in one even go. There we go. I am anal. I know it's a horrible word about this stuff. I really am. Um, we need a little pinstripe on the edge. So the easiest way to do it is to get the one mil tape. This is actually Azu tape because the Tamiya one mil tape is proven a bit unreliable at the minute. It's not cut straight. It is to butt up the one mil tape to the other piece of tape where we need to mask the black edge and then mask in another piece to the edge of that. And then if you remove that bit of tape, it gives you a perfect pinstripe like that. So we're going to burnish down the edge and then over and then back over the top. And there we go. Absolutely perfect. We'll repeat that for both sides. So you just butt up the other one mil bit of tape and get it perfectly straight. Don't be afraid to take it off and reposition it. These have been detacked as well. And then again, using the other piece of tape to butt up right next to it. Burnish it down. And grab that middle bit of tape, gently lift it off, and there you go, job done. Perfect, perfect pinstripes. And again, we burnish down the edges. That very front lip of the bonnet is going to be chrome. And then infill the sides with some Tamiya 6mm tape. And then we can get a bit of 18mm on the sides. And there we go, there's our, our bonnet mask done. So while it's not technically correct for this year a car i don't really care I, I am one of those i'll do my own take on things and i much prefer this look to the decal because i think the decal would have shown through it certainly would have had a clear coat on top right in the spray booth and we have some pro scale jet black and we're going to pop this down with a couple of light coats now because we've masked make sure all this is burnished down we don't want any bleed through i find just run your finger on the edge does the job just fine as long as you're using high quality tape like Azu or Tamiya, you shouldn't get any bleed through and spray nice light thin coats. You don't need to go crazy. And if you're not, you won't have any step on the paint work at all because our paint is so nice and thin. And once you've got full coverage and you're happy, you can leave that be. So if you use something like TS paint that's quite thick, you'll end up with a visible step on the paint work. You'll need to flat back a bit. Using ours, there's no step there at all. Can't feel a thing. There's nothing there. Because our paint's so nice and thin, it works absolutely perfectly. Back on the bench, we can unmask everything. So we should have a nice pinstripe here now. All being well. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Same on the other side. Is this one going to be perfect as well? Ooh, the suspense. Is it? Is it going to be perfect? Oh yeah, baby. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Perfect. Now, as I'm feeling across, no visible step there at all. Decals. Now, there's several decals for the side. Like I say, if you look at either edge of my finger and uh, index finger on the left, they're the stripes that are supposed to go on the bonnet and like infill the outer edge. And it was just having none of it. It was just not going to work. So that's why I did my own take on it. So there's several decals on the exterior. Uh, I've got these black Mac 1 stripes that go down the side. There's a couple of little stripes. I think it's on the front and the back. Might just be the back on this one. Um, that need to be put on as well. So we're just going to cut everything off. I've got one in water for now. I've gone for cool water. I didn't bother with warm water. It was quite a warm day. Um, we're just going to get one in the bowl. These did take forever ever to come off the back and paper if i remember right um so while it's soaking i'm just going to cut off the other decals we need in preparation once we've got the decal off we're going to lay it in place so we're referring to our instructions to see where it sits we've got a little bit extra moisture out of the pot there it's going to pop it on top so we can move the decal around safely and just refer to references real life re references where things need to go 
standard decal procedure get the moisture out from behind so i tend to brush it with the just moistened water brush for now and then we'll grab a cotton bud and wipe it all over in the meantime i'm going to put those decals on too now i made a mistake on this one i didn't spray the marker light silver i should have masked and painted the windows and the marker light silver before i went to decals but it was a mistake i made yes so a little bit of a pain i think it was that eager to get the decals on i completely forgot of my build process but it's fine we can fix it all near the end like i say get all moisture out from behind the decals just gently roll over a cotton bud until all the moisture is gone from behind and then we've got some ultimate modeling products decal solutions by far the best on the market these things i developed these and they are absolutely outstanding so on with the normal first there's a strong and extra strong as well so they will set most decals with ease uh, and they are by far the best decal solutions you'll get we're just going to run over the normal first make sure it's all covered properly burnished down let it dry for a bit or we do the other side and then we can come in with some strong and get them fully set in place the rear bootleg one's a little bit tricky uh, thankfully the decal's a good fit so i found to hold the edge and just drag it on work the best so yeah just keep referring to instructions and i say Heat is good with decals too. This heat gun I use a lot. Works absolutely fantastic. So we've hit them with the decal solutions, hit them with a bit of heat to get rid of any excess moisture that may be behind them. And then we can cut our panel lines and get them set in the panel lines as well. But the black on black with my stripe on the bonnet looks absolutely beautiful. Such a good looking car. Beautiful paint job as well. You're really not going to appreciate this till the end of the video when you see it all painted up in pictures because it just all gets kind of whited out by my bench lights i have a lot of light over my bench there's like three big lights over there and it does wipe them out so we need to go around and mask all the windows all the chrome work so again using the azu tape we're going to go around and just follow the demarcation of the windows like so just very gently burnish it down be careful of any tweezers you don't scratch your paint and just follow that raised edge of the window. Now, on these windows, I'm going to use uh, Mistopi Dual Aluminum. That's what I've been using for a long time. Literally halfway through this build, our chrome paint became available. You're going to see me use that later on. Uh, there's already a video on ISM if you've not seen it already. And it's going to revolutionize the way the chrome's done. It looks absolutely fantastic. So, this is the last one you'll probably ever see me paint in dual aluminum. From now on, they'll be painted in ProScale Paints Chrome. And the bumpers and that I do in this look absolutely fabulous later. They really do. So it's a case of going all the way around doing this. Then we infill it with the three mil tape and then fill it with the larger Tamiya tapes until it looks like this. Now, because I couldn't tape over the decal, I had to kind of make a little mask out of paper, fold them around so there's no adhesive on the, uh, the decals. Like I said, I shouldn't this before I decaled. Like I said, we've got some Mist Hobby Super Metallic Dual Aluminum. Thinned about 60% with Mist Hobby Rapid Thinner. We're going through the Iwata. No, we're not. We're going through the UMP Apex this time. At about 16, 18 PSI. Several light coats building it up. It does give a good finish, but it's not going to beat our chrome, and you'll see later on. So the door handles are masked. All the windows are masked, but I can't do the marker light because I've got a decal on it. So like I say, we should have done this before decaling. But hey, ho, it is what it is. We've also got this leading edge bonnet as well. This needs a little bit of a, a touch up too. So there we go. Several light coats of that does the job just fine. And then some very gentle and masking. Make sure all this tape is um, detacked before you put it on. And don't put any decal, uh, no masking tape over the decals because it will rip the decal straight off when you pull them off. So be very careful and also don't use cling film don't put cling film on burr decals because that'll lift them off as well so a lot of faffing for masking but a job well done because the windows look great now so it is a tedious job it takes a long time to do but 
there literally really is no quick way of doing it. On the Revell kits, the worst thing to do is around the window wipers. Revell AMT, any of those kits that are molded in window wipers, they're a pain in the backside to do. So, yeah, it's just one of those things. It's a boring, monotonous job. But it's a very focal point on the car. You can see how good it looks already. That's absolutely fantastic. This car and its clear codes are just absolutely pops. But you're not going to see that, I think, until part two, unfortunately. Today, we're just getting everything prepped and ready for 2K. But it's looking good so far. I can say this Aqua, uh, Gulfstream Aqua is absolutely beautiful. We've everything dried, the decals are dried overnight now. The paint's well and truly cured. We're going to put some Tamiya Grey Paneline Wash and mix it with a bit of black to make a really nice dark brown colour for our Paneline. Definitely my favourite washes, these. They're just simple, easy, and quick to use. So, did I say dark brown? I said it meant dark grey. A dark grey Paneline Wash. So, black and grey make dark grey obviously just mix it just keep mixing until you're happy with the tone it will dry a touch lighter so i'd always go a touch darker to begin with and give it a good mix up job done uh completely reaction should carry the wash rounds so just touch it to the panel line you should pull it round. and you know my theory if i hold a wash Give it a wash. So it's going to go around and pop a panel line in everywhere. This stuff takes about 20, 30 minutes to dry, depending on the ambient temperature of the room you're in. Uh, once it's dry, you can remove it with some Winsor Newton Sansador, which is my odorless mineral spirit. Or you can use any mineral spirit you want. Just check first on your paint. But mineral spirits from Sansador, uh, sorry, Winsor Newton work perfect on this. I've used it many, many times, so I know. Just be wary around the decals. So we have cut the decals on the panel lines and set them in place too. So they are recessed in there, so nothing should get underneath and lift it. And on the panel on the wipers, um, I always infill with black as well, just to give it a little bit of depth. So we'll let all this dry, then come back with a moistened co uh, cotton bud with some Santador on, a piece of tissue to clean off all the excess wash. So I tend to use the moistened cotton bud to get all the excess off. It will leave some behind and it will leave a bit of moistened uh, paintwork. But we're putting an enamel wash over a lacquer paint so there's no reaction at all. Obviously if you rub really hard, you're probably going to friction off paint. But there's no need to go out like a, a behemoth. You're just trying to remove the paint, the excess wash. As you can see, it comes off really easy. So once we've got the bulk of it off with the cotton bud, it does leave some mineral spirit residue behind. I've got a nice clean piece of tissue. And then gently over those decals, just wipe until all the remnants of the black wash are gone. Well, the dark brown, uh, dark grey wash are gone. Now on the back end, we've got a Mustang logo. There's nothing in the kit to do it. And I've got these Edding paint marker pens this night nice, nice one in bright silver so i opted to use this so I pulled the paint through got the nib nice and wet wiped off the nib and then we're just touching it to the raised lettering and for the most part most of it went on the lettering didn't miss apart from that bit so if it does we'll get a cocktail uh, sorry a micro cotton bud we'll just wipe off any excess and then a larger one just to clean it up So there's plenty of ways you could do this. This for me is the easiest way. So don't load up the pen. You don't want to sop it in paint. Because it will just run. It could completely reaction through the letter. But because you're putting again. It's like an ink based. Metal on there. It'll wipe off the lacquer quite easily. So just take your time. And you'll be all good. And there we go, and finally go over, just checking for any excess we can wipe off. Again, the best job you do here, you don't want any bits of silver behind because you'll see it under the clear coat, so make sure you get rid of any excess. 
and then there we go all washed decal painted chromed ready for 2k fun if it's perfect the color is beautiful and we'll be back for part two very very soon which will hopefully get this 2k and see a true representation of that color so there we go let's go back to me so there we go there's part one done um stunning color you can't see it properly these cameras white things out and they're terrible for doing that uh you'll see it properly at the end and it's a pretty car if you're on my social media you've seen it already it is a very very pretty car so part one done and dusted we're back in part two almost straight away oh, everything's filmed and edited now uh, i'm just gonna do these end uh, voiceovers and what have you so you can tell my voice is going on me there um but wonderful color not a bad kit at all those panels are a little bit tricky to glue in place but a little bit of care and time you'll get them in place no problem at all so yeah looking forward to uh showing you got you guys this one finished there we go thanks for watching today thanks for your continued support everyone don't forget it's only you patrons that get to see these videos so leave me a comment i do apologize for being a bit lax on replying lately it just takes so much time replying i normally go through uh, at a bunch and do them all but i've got that far behind i don't know where to start i really don't so i went through today and hearted all your comments and comments on a few ones that asked the question so apologies for not replying i always do my best to reply to people who've taken the time to comment but uh, let me know what you think of the build if you got this kit if you built it would you like it what color would you have done let me know in the comments below like i said we'll be back very soon in part two enjoy the rest of the day everyone take care bye bye